Here's my Y equals sine X. I hope yours looks roughly similar. Oh, projector mode on? I do. OK, excellent. Now, um, what you can see here is different to what you drew in a couple of ways. The first way is I asked you to do a restriction on the domain. I asked you to go from 0 to 2 pi. That's a domain. Um, the range is negative 1 to 1. I asked you to go from 0 to 2 pi. Where is 2 pi, by the way? On here. Yeah, a bit after 6 because pi is 3.14-ish. So pi is 6.28. There it is right there. You can see my intercepts, OK? Now, what I'd really love to be able to do is see this with all of the radians sort of easier to read. It is in radians right now, but come over to the top right-hand corner if that's where you've got that little um, wrench icon into the settings. You can see radians is highlighted. Have you got that there? It should already have come default, right? What I want you to do is, it's small, I apologize. Go to where it says step. Do you see there's um, an x and a y axis and each one is a step? When they say step, what they mean is you know, how many numbers are there between each of the grid lines. That's what they're talking about. What I want you to do is on the x axis, go to step. And then for the x axis step, um, you can either type in the letters pi or if you pull up the Desmos keyboard, there's a pi right here. And I'm going to change the step to pi uh, on 2. I think it actually defaults to that. So you can see now. Everything's in radians. Did it come up on yours? Yes, so look at it. Excellent. Fantastic. All right. Now, this is more useful to me. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to investigate this guy and try and work out together how we can express the derivative off of just a visual investigation of this. Now, what I want you to do in your book, if you haven't already, uh, I haven't, so probably you haven't either, please make a heading, which is calculus of trigonometric functions. I beg your pardon, Fletcher? Yeah, basically. Um, we are going to do more than just trigonometric functions, but that's where we're going to start today. We're going to be in this little land for a little while, so this is an appropriate heading, I think. Now, what I want us to do is to kind of, like I said, play detective, and we're going to gather our evidence, gather clues, by looking at different parts of this graph and trying to understand features of it, and we're going to kind of build up a dot list, right? We're trying to um, gather information about this, and as we look at different function, we can conclude different things about its derivative. Okay? Now, you may well have already even encountered, maybe you just were flicking through something in the textbook or some other year 12 older student showed you, maybe you already know what the derivative of this function is, and I'm not interested. I need to know that you know why it is what it is. The answer is actually much less important to me. Okay? Here's the thing. This graph, unlike say y equals x squared or those other graphs that we started differentiating before, um, it repeats over and over again, right? What do we call that when the function repeats over and over and over again? We call it, starts with a P. So it repeats over and over again, and it's, it's got a, a sort of distance that's the same copy. It's, we, that's a period. We call this a periodic function, right? Just like the periodic table, it's the same idea over and over again, the same properties in chemicals, right? So it's a periodic function. Now, welcome back. Yes. They so missed you. It's, it's stuck with me. OK, now. Think about this with me, right? If, if our function that we're actually interested in, if this thing is periodic, then the gradient function of this, surely that must be periodic too, right? Does that make sense? Like, for example, um, you've got some points here that are very important. Is it working? Yes, yeah, it's working. Fantastic, okay. You've got some points here that are really important, and they're going to come up over and over and over again, right? So therefore, we, what we can say is, this is about the derivative of sine x. That's what we're investigating right now. Because sine x is periodic, then surely the derivative of sine x is also periodic. So that's our first clue. OK, that's the first thing. The second thing is, when it comes to gradient, a few of the spots on this graph are more important and more interesting and easier to spot than others. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to try and keep this in a stable spot so that we can look at it now with this in mind. For example, let's mark them in right now. I've got a red here. We have names for these spots here, and here, and here. What do we call these guys? We call them stationary points. Why do we call them stationary points? Yeah, they're kind of not moving, right? The technical definition is, if we were to draw a tangent line at these spots, the tangent would look like this, right? Horizontal, do you see that? Okay. If you go anywhere else on the graph, like say here, the tangent will not be horizontal. It will be down or up. But at these particular spots, you get a horizontal tangent. Now, what does this tell us about the derivative? What do you know about the derivative 
if the tangent's horizontal. Will. Very good. The derivative, can we write that together? The derivative, actually, I'm just going to write dy and dx because. I am lazy. Uh, dy and dx, right? It's going to be 0 when x takes on a bunch of particular values. And we can see some of them right here. What's the first one that I've marked in? Have a look. The x value. Uh, it's pi. pi on 2. Very good. What's the next one? 3 pi on 2. What's the next one? 5 pi on 2. And in fact, every odd value of pi on 2 in the positive direction, dot, 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 and in fact, also in the negative direction. So I could have had a dot, dot, dot at the beginning here as well. It could have been the previous one, the one that's not shown on this graph. Negative pi on 2, right? So all of these, you just slap a minus sign on it, and you'll also get these stationary points. OK, very good. Now, the next thing I want you to do is, and um, it's a bit tricky uh, to do this on the screen. That's why I asked you to draw sine x for me. On the graph that you drew on your page, what I want you to do is enact something we've done before, which is to talk about not just these places where the derivative is 0, but I want us to think about the sine, the plus or minus of the derivative here. So for example, see this spot right here? Yep. It's increasing. Do you agree? Yep. It's increasing right there. So I can put a plus sign there showing that I should have a positive gradient to match that increasing part of the function. And it's still positive, it's still positive, and so on. I want you to start marking those in, and you've also got these negative sections here. Can you do the entire copy of the graph that you have on your page? Do that by hand, show the pluses and the minuses, where the gradient is whatever it should be. Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, you can put it however you want. Uh, it's not stationary. That is? No, it's not, because it doesn't have a horizontal tangent. Yeah, it's, it's those, those red ones. Red ones over there. How's your drive, Mrs. Lees? Long. <laughs> With a lot of traffic going into the uh, Did you return the van? Or? Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Okay, now, I'm going to put this back in a second, but um, here's one I prepared earlier. Now, what have you got here? All of the parts where it's going down, all the parts going up, the sign of the derivative. That's what we've just determined, right? We're going to try and graph this derivative. I want to know where's it positive? Where's it negative? So the orange parts, it's all negative. The green part, it's all positive. So you might want to indicate that you know, with something like this. dy and dx, somewhere it's 0. We already marked those in. But sometimes it's greater than 0. It's positive in those particular sections. And sometimes it's negative. So you can put that, draw that onto your graph. Okay? Where's it positive? Where's it negative? 